Why is it so yellow in this room? Amber is the color of my energy. Whoa. Here's what's happening. 10 minutes ago, YouTube recommended to me this video that I did like three years ago that was a vlog a week in my life. And at the time I remember thinking, okay, that was nice. I don't really need to do that again. But I clicked on it. It has half a million views and a lot of really positive comments. So snap decision. We're just gonna do it again. We're gonna do it this week. I don't even know what I'm doing this week. So this could be incredibly boring, in which case it will go in the trash heap of history, but we don't know that yet. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. It's Saturday night around 6 p.m. and I'm about to go to an art opening, which as I say it, makes me seem really unrelatable. But my, my arm is already tired. Uh, uh. It's gonna be a long week. Let me just make a pitch for art openings, okay? Especially if you live in a big city. One, if you're an old woman like me, they start at 6 p.m., they're free. They're free alcohol, I don't really drink, but free alcohol. And you get to go home at like 7.30 or eight and be like, oh, I've been to an event of culture in my city. It's a really fun, free thing to do in your city. Who are we seeing this evening? We are seeing Mika Tajima, Psychographics. Let me just read you, <laughs> before we go, let me read you this artist statement and see if you can see it in the work. The title is a verbal play on the term psychographics, which is a data research method that renders human subjects as political or economic targets by modeling their inner subjective psychology and predicting individual beliefs, attitudes, and values. That's Light Art by the artist James Turrell, who was most famously ripped off in Drake's Hotline Bling video. Art. Sunday. Good morrow, everyone. It is Sunday fun day, and I have this phone propped up in a jar of eyeshadow brushes, which is all fun and games until I need one. Uh, did you just... Oh, here's the perfect shot. Nailed it. Now, even though it is a Sunday morning, my brain is already thinking of all of the exciting opportunities I have to work. Today, we have to learn to have a work-life balance. Cause some of us historically are not great at that. Here's what I am doing today that's not working. It's going to brunch with some friends. I forgot to mention it's drag brunch. my old friend. I was so profoundly tired last night. All I did yesterday was go to that brunch and then go to this comedy show thing in Silver Lake. This morning I am doing some writing, which is not that fun to film, I would say. Headed to the gym, not because I love it, but because I get so cranky if I don't exercise for a long time. How was your exercise today? Thank you for asking how my exercise was. Um, you know, it was good, don't fall in the planner. I think I learned that I need to exercise with like a class or like a group or a trainer because I have the ability to push myself mentally with work, like brain work. I can push myself up to the max. But with exercise, I just don't have that skill. I do not have the ability to push myself any more than what somebody is yelling at me to do. I am a bourgeois nightmare. I thought I would tell you about the writing that I was doing this morning. I'm working on book number four, slowly but surely, and I'm still on the stage where I'm reading a lot and outlining and gathering information. And when I read a book that I really is super useful to me, I outline the crap out of it, I write stuff in it, and then I have to go back through it and pick out quotes that are actually really useful, my thoughts that are really useful. So the book that I did this morning, which I love, is 
Holy shit, managing manure to save mankind. He writes in this absolutely stunningly kind and moving way about shit. It's the way that I aspire to write about corpses. And the problem is, I first read this book and did all my marking up and underlining probably six months ago. So now I have things written in here like feces and the fear of death, Jung, Zizek. What does that mean? Don't know now. I probably should have uh, taken a little more notes there because not a damn clue what that means now. Hey, Caitlin, when'd you get home from that trip? It wasn't yesterday. It wasn't two days ago. It wasn't three days ago. On a Tuesday. The plan today was to go to the Getty Museum, which another plug for a free cultural facility in your city, if your city happens to be Los Angeles. I was gonna enjoy the museum, but also make it a full work day, do some research reading and writing. But when you also own a funeral home, the Lord doesn't always have the plans for you that you have for yourself. So the morning has been spent working out a bureaucratic issue with a death certificate and a permit and a burial that's happening for someone who died. This is not an interesting story, but it's my story. Wait, what? <laughs> Welcome to my home. Uh, those are some of my friends. They're hanging out here today. So damn beautiful today. Look at this, look at this crap. Shouldn't be allowed. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, <laughs> you've caught me living my best life. Cause it's Wednesday. Today is a busy, busy day. Ooh, this lighting. Hello, good morning. First up, a lot of computer work that I did not film. Second up, filming a video. It's a video. Now the video that I'm shooting today, you are not going to see probably until next month because these longer videos, these 25 minute, 30 minute ones, are a long process. It's research, then I travel and film somewhere, and then it's more research, and then it's back and forth on the script, and then it's filming, and then it's back and forth on the editing. It's a whole, a whole thing. So in maybe a month's time, you're gonna see this outfit, you're gonna see this hair, and it's gonna be a deja vu moment. The biggest struggle for these new, much longer videos is that I don't have a second battery for my camera. So the camera battery often runs out with like two minutes of recording left to go. And if you think I don't have an existential crisis when that happens, you would be wrong. I actually don't have too much time to do this because I have to get to the crematory, so I'm cutting you off here. Headed to the crematory, my only concern is that it rained for the first time in forever in Los Angeles today. And when that happens, people lose their minds. And I'm worried that it's gonna take me the rest of my life to get to the crematory. Got to the crematory and picked up our guest that's joining us in the car today. And yes, that is how I transport urns of cremated remains in my car. No, this does not count for the carpool lane. I'm taking this person back to our office now because their family does not live in Los Angeles and cannot come to Los Angeles. So this person is going on a journey. So what are we thinking for this car ride? NPR? Light music? I just noticed there's some guys in the background. If only they knew who I was talking to. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but someone in this building is very passionately singing U2's Where the Streets Have No Name. Everybody's being a lot today. That's something that I've noticed about today. Here's how an urn would be mailed. I'm not gonna show you who this is, obviously, but inside here is a sealed plastic bag with the ashes or cremated remains in it. Then we have this heavy plastic travel urn, and then we have this nice bag that it goes in. But this urn is now going to go into this Priority Mail Express box covered in cremated remains stickers. 
Fun fact, if this is what you consider fun, cremated remains can only be transferred by the United States Postal Service. So you cannot UPS human remains, you can't FedEx human remains. Has to go by United States Postal Service in this very fancy box in a box in a box in a box setup labeled with cremated remains because precious cargo, obviously, and they don't wanna be responsible for anyone losing or misplacing the precious. Now we go to the post office and see what person is going to be confused and horrified by what we're doing today. That guy was very nice and very helpful and we got the person sent right off back home to their family. I'm watching Democratic debate but Joe Biden makes me so tense. Skype time. Today's outfit of the day is Sad Christmas Elf. Good morning. Hello. We're wearing matching sweaters. Yeah. I'm very excited to be able to look at my calendar or my horrible notes and see, you know, five months ahead of time. It all emerges from the muck like a like a lily from the shit. Yes, I am a lily from the shit. Hi, I'm Caitlin Doty and welcome to another episode of Is Cutting My Own Bangs in My Bathroom Mirror a Good Idea? Probably not. We can see here that they have gotten far too long. Look at that, unacceptable. I'm not a hipster. Please don't take this as actual advice because I've messed this up enough times to know that I should not be giving advice to anyone. Here we go. And that's kind of it. You can see the victims in the sink. Et voila! They're always a little too short for the first couple of days, to be honest. But we can see my eyebrows. Friday! In I go to get my nails done. I know what you're thinking. Caitlin, why are you paying to have your nails done when you literally hack at your hair in your bathroom sink? I thought you were that kind of person. And I am that kind of person, but that's good money management is seeing where your true weaknesses are. I can't do this on my own. I don't have those skills. I went in with full intention for very autumnal nails, maybe a mauve or a taupe. Whoops. It's never autumn in Los Angeles. This video will meet its death here. What have we learned? I've learned from this experiment that if you decide to film a week in your life, maybe pick a week when you're doing something interesting. Filming someone on their computer or making phone calls or going to appointments is not thrilling content. I did learn on a personal note that I do have a better work-life balance than I sometimes give myself credit for. I'm not actually chained in a basement. But that's the thing about being your own boss. You're never literally chained to a desk or in a basement, but you're chained in the basement of your mind. Not working all the time here, but you're working all the time here. You get me. And on that anticlimactic note, I'll see you in another three years, maybe. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. This new phone is so nice, I just want to take selfies. You could see all this art, or you could like stand in front of this view like... It's a very dark impulse, but I'm trying to be vulnerable with you right now. They set up perfect shots. I'm basically a film and video producer. I'm very exceptional at my job. Oh, it's the wrong one. Jesus Christ, superstar.